BK Kaposki with Rewat Films, and I'm a producer. Um, one of the projects that I'm really working on right now is an international fashion TV series. I don't have any films here at the, at the festival, but um, I'm here more as a speaker to help producers that are coming up to be able to obtain finance, and that's you know one of the things that I do. Uh, assist like young upcoming filmmakers to learn how to package their project and present it to investors. We're, I'm actually having a uh, film finance incubator in New York City on September 14th. Um, do a little plug on my... <laughs> uh, the, my website is filmfinanceseminars.com um, for those that might be interested. And so I, I'm based both, my company is based both in New York and in the Philippines, um, in Asia. And uh, we're, we're, my specialty, I guess, is doing international co-production. So I have partners in like Europe and, and Asia throughout the world. And um, I, found, I found that going global opens a lot more doors, a lot more opportunity. But the, the projects that I'm working on right now is, is this international fashion series that's going to be in 14 countries. And I also have an independent film that we're doing in Pennsylvania. Uh, called Johnstown. It's about a town that was flooded. It was one, one of the biggest uh, natural disasters in the country. Um, and it's a period piece, so it's budget-wise, it's probably going to be expensive. But um, those are the two projects I'm concentrating on. Okay, thanks. And so, as a producer and also a filmmaker, I know that maybe you have been to many countries and also film festivals. Can you please tell us more about it? Like, which one is the most interesting to you and maybe share some interesting experiments with us? Sure. I, I want to first thank the Montgomery Film Festival for inviting me and having me be here as a part of it. This is actually my first film festival, believe it or not. <laughs> I've not really attended many film festivals. I have gone to the Hong Kong Film Art and I've been to AFM, American, you know, American Film Market. Um, so I'm more so on the business side of filmmaking than I am on the creative. Not not by choice. It just kind of um, happened that way over the years. I've always wanted to be a director, and I've directed uh, independent films and music videos. But my dream has always been to be like the next uh, Steven Spielberg. You know, uh, I just haven't gotten there yet. It's going to happen though. <laughs> um, so yeah. So basically, this this is my first film festival, my first experience. I've always wanted to go to like Sundance or Toronto, or even Cannes, and I just haven't had the opportunity. I've been mostly involved in like the business side with raising finance. So I've tra most of my travels have been in relation to business. Um, I, I went to Asia, to China, and Philippines, Thailand. I went there to initially to go after the money that's coming out of China for Hollywood productions because that, that was a big thing like a couple of years ago. I know that the government now has put some limitations on money being able to be sent out of the country, but you know there's always ways to figure that out. So we, you know, I'm working with uh, partners there in China. I have a, a team in uh, Philippines. I also have uh, connections in Indonesia. So I'm very well connected in the, the Asian continent. And, uh, you know, and but New York is my home. You know, and I, and I also travel back and forth to LA because that's where the you know mostly the film industry is. Um, but yeah, as far as like experience with film festivals, this is my first, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm more like the film market person because that's where the business opportunities are, and that's where the money people are usually at is the American film market, Hong Kong film art, uh, you know, at Cannes. You can actually go and like meet investors and speak to them. And, Pitch your projects and stuff like that. Okay, so uh, are there any films that you watched in this film festival you really enjoyed? <laughs> yeah. I, I really didn't get a chance to see a lot of the films um, while I'm here. Uh, I, I saw the opening night film and I uh, thought it was amazing. It was like, you know, to be honest, like art films. Um, haven't been my focus per se. I've been more involved in commercial Hollywood type productions or like like uh, genre specific uh, independent films. Uh, but I'm a big fan of art film, and I'm like a big fan of uh, you know some of the what you would consider like art filmmakers, like 
um, David Lynch, like a huge fan of David Lynch, and, <laughs> and Cronenberg. And like, so I, I come from a uh, background of, you know, I grew up with, like, with a horror, interest in horror films and like, psychological thrillers. So Brian De Palma, people like that that have directed these, you know, what could be considered the Hollywood level art films, I believe. You know? um, but yeah, I, I would like, I would actually today, I'm, I'm going to have the opportunity to see some more films today. And, and I want to make sure that happens. So, do you think there's a, like a barricade for people to cross in the in the field, like the art house film or the commercial film? Is like the so big gap between that? I think I think like people that create art house films, it's more they're not looking to go commercial. They're not looking for commercial success as much, although that it's a possibility that, you know, a really good art house film can become commercially successful. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's actually easier. I would say it might be easier to, to do an art house film because the, it doesn't rely specifically on budget, whereas a commercial movie, mm -hmm. like a Hollywood picture, you're, you know, talking like huge money. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, with the technology today, you can actually create the film on your iPhone. Like 4K iPhone, it's just it's just so unbelievable how much technology has advanced in the last 10 to 20 years. Uh, so it gives more accessibility to filmmakers to be able to uh, produce their own works and like to you know even to just get started and to be able to find their voice uh, and their voice in film and like how they want to uh, achieve their goals, I guess. And um, you know, so I would. My, my thing has always been like, don't ever give up on your dreams, like, mm -hmm. just go out and do it. Don't rely on money, like, make it happen, It's because it's easy to have, like, you can actually make something happen on a very minimal budget now, um, because of the technology, and don't let anybody ever tell you that you can't do something, because I, you know, I said, there was a day when I was like saying, like, oh, I, I should go after money in China, I want to become a global company, and who would have thought that I would be in the position where I am today? Like I, I kind of doubted myself at the time, but now I'm connected right up to the, the president of the Philippines and have a uh, presidential endorsement for my company. Um, you know, I've got like partners throughout the world, I've got business partners in the United Kingdom, and uh, the, the, what do you call it, the Trinidad Tobago in Africa. Like just just from this fashion series alone, I would say that we we've got over like a hundred partners throughout the world, and that I mean that's just it seems just like miraculous to me that um, you know back when like a few years ago I would have never have thought that I would be where I'm at today, and it's just because of going out and doing it. Like you just gotta have to believe in yourself and go out and do it, you know. So never give up. Yeah. So people need to keep on dreaming, right? Yes. Sometimes they need to come to reality. So, as a producer, mainly from the business side, what advice would you give to the directors from all over the world, all around the world, to those who produce like art films and also the commercial films? Um, there's something I that there's a beginning stage for everyone. Like you know, if you're if you're just starting out, you really need to educate yourself on what is required to get move your project forward. Um, which is one of the reasons why I, I hold these uh, film finance workshops, like both here on the East Coast and also we've had them in LA. And we, we do that so that we can educate uh, upcoming filmmakers to learn how to package and, and get their projects uh, in front of investors and, and really, you know, give them the chance to achieve their dreams and their goals. Um, but there are, you know, there are things that you need to know, like, so like, you can't just go into it blindly. You, you do need to educate yourself to some level and find out uh, what the needs are. Like when, when investors, they have certain requirements. So my recommendation would be just to, um, you know, start, especially with the internet today, like you can find out anything. So you know, just Google, start Googling, like, you know, how to, to put together a business plan, um, how to, you know, approach investment people, just to start, Learning about it, you know. Um, the other, the other advice I would give, because it's all, it's, it even happens to me, even at, on a professional level, is the 
you know, people always ask, well, what experience do you have? Like, oh, are you on IMDb? You know, yeah, I'm on IMDb. Just look, look at my name. But, you know, they're always, like, questioning and, like, always doubting. And I, I hate the naysayers that say that you can't do something. So, like, I'm, it just empowers me. It gives me more energy to go out and prove them wrong. But, you know, the best way to do that is to believe in yourself and to really, to make people aware of what you're doing. You can actually create your own... I guess it's kind of strange, but you could actually create your own reality in a way, where you, you know, you basically make, on your social media like Facebook, or if you have a website, if you have a project, make it look like the project is already happening. Make it look like it's already in motion, because that's what attracts people. They, they want to see that something is happening, and they're going to be like, oh, I want to be a part of that. And that propels your project into reality. Like, you know, investors will then be like, oh, what's going on? Like, what, what is this person doing? This is amazing. What, one of the examples I used yesterday is uh, in the music industry, there, you know, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, the current uh, artists, but there's, uh, you know, a lot of the artists that are, have gotten popular today have done so through social media. They, they, they just post their music on a platform, and all of a sudden they have like Drake or, you know, somebody in the music, somebody high up in the music industry. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Like, let me let me check this person out, and then they develop a relationship, and they get promoted that way. So, like, it's it's that easy. If you get your work out there and get your work seen, there's no reason why, you know, Steven Spielberg might be calling you, like, and saying, oh, well, this is amazing, you know, it's happened before. So, like, you know, do the best that you can to uh, create an image for yourself, to build your brand, and to make it look like you're already in the process, and then doors will start opening. Thanks for the advice and also the recommendation. And the last question, what are your future projects? Can you maybe introduce to the audience? Future projects, own. yes. Yes. So yeah, I would, I would love to introduce my uh, TV series. I'm, I'm actually more of a feature film background, but my TV series is my, my passion right now. I've been working on it for about two years in development, and it's just starting to come together. Where you know th these things take time. Like if, when you go after finance and things like that, don't expect it to happen overnight. It takes years. <laughs> but uh, we're doing a project that's an international fashion uh, tourism competition series. It's like a reality show. Um, it has the look and feel of Anthony Bourdain's travel show, where he goes out and samples food in different countries. So we have a we have a, a model like a talent scout that travels to 14 different countries and is looking for new faces for both models and fashion designers and has that look and feel like Anthony Bourdain. But the bones of the show is a competition for the models for you know new faces for models and designers and um, we've gotten a lot of interest uh, globally. This you know this is the project that I've been talking about that's open doors for for my company. Um, we even have Warner Brothers TV uh, interested. Uh, we're, we're looking at getting celebrities involved, you know, top level celebrities. And it's really, you know, there's always like, one of the things I should tell the viewers is that uh, in the business, there's what they call Catch-22. And what that is, is like, you'll, you'll get an investor interested in your idea, but then they always want something else that you have to achieve or accomplish to get them to come aboard, you know, so it's always a back and forth. Um, the way to, to beat that and to get around that is to get other people on your team that have experience and that have, you know, the, the opportunities, the connections that you need to, to make them partners in, on your project. And that's what we've done. We've, we've got partners in, you know, 14 different countries. We have, we just keep building the, the brand and we're, we're going to actually launch our social media platform. Uh, within the next month, we're supposed to be doing uh, a media announcement of the project uh, during New York Fashion Week in September. Mm -hmm. That may be delayed due to uh, our investments. You know, there, there's some delay. There's always like a delay when it comes to investment money. <laughs> there's like a drawdown schedule and all of that. But um, you know, so we're just waiting on, on that to happen. But our goal is to start uh, pre-production in the fall and then to actually go into production internationally. We're going to start off in Asia in January. And throughout the next year, up until September 2020, New York Fashion Week, we'll be doing the different countries. And um, one model, one designer from each of the countries will be selected in their, in their native country. And they'll be brought back to New York for New York Fashion Week 2020. And then we'll have a final competition 
we rename the, you know, the face, the model, and the designer for the show. And we've got like a lot of support within the fashion industry, the community. Um, you know, I, I don't want to like name companies just yet because I don't want to like jeopardize anything. But uh, you know, hopefully we'll be able to make an announcement for during New York Fashion Week. And, and actually, you know, if any of the viewers are interested in uh, participating or being involved, they can always contact me. I don't know if you want to provide contact info, but. Um, we're always looking for people that we can work with and partnering with people. It's, we're trying to empower like new filmmakers as well as uh, you know partnerships that are already established. And I'm, I'm a very my goal in life is to help other people. That's that's my thing. I, so anything that I accomplish or achieve, I want to share with other people. That's I want to leave a legacy, for, you know, for the world. Basically, yeah. sounds kind of cheesy, but. <laughs> So, thanks for coming and also attending our film festival, yeah? Right? Okay. Thank you so much, I appreciate mm -hmm. it.